This is Betula jackmontii, white barked Himalayan birch, and um, very striking tree. The uh, most prominent feature obviously is its white bark. This is the whitest bark of the different birch trees. And um, the other reason we like this one is its form. It has a very erect um, vertical form and even the branches are more upright than um, the popular European white birch, which is more of a drooping, graceful habit. So here's a great look at the uh, white bark that peels off. Very, very uh, eye-catching and excellent for lighting effects, by the way. So even if this is deciduous uh, during the winter and without its leaves, lights up nicely in the landscape, so it's a, a great feature. The other thing is is that uh, th they have this more predictable form again than the European or weeping birch and that's something to be thoughtful of when you're designing. This is, uh, this is going to look more formal when you need that. Um, if you need to frame something, it's just going to be a more structured look overall. You can see here that these three trees have all done well. They're all about the same size. My experience with the weeping birch is that, uh, the European birch is that um, you plant three of them and one or two will do okay and one will almost always uh, fail or be outcompeted. So I really like this birch and um, also, so let me talk to you about it in my area. So the book says this gets up 40 to 60 feet tall and it's native to uh, northern India. I live in northern California and we have very low humidity. Um, our humidity most of the year is below 20 percent. And I find that a lot of the literature that states how plants grow is very affected by your local climate. And I, I think that uh, the drier air that we have, and, and so why I'm saying this is because if you've got drier air, you, you want to pay attention, is that you're not going to get the size out of this tree in an area like ours that you would in a place with higher humidity and similar conditions to its native habitat. Um, I've never seen this tree over 30 feet in our area, and there's some pretty mature ones and I've been looking at trees for over 20 years so I think that um, the overall height is probably a bit stunted just because of our drier air and um, and also how things are watered we don't get lots of extra water the only water these get during the hottest part of the year is from um, irrigation and so uh, by the way all birches need nice amounts of water um, regular water at, at at a minimum and a little extra isn't a bad thing. Um, also as you can see here these are shallow rooted and um, see there so and you can also see that there's moss growing here so this is an area where they're keeping it nice and moist and the birch is really thriving in that condition and I think that's something you want to pay attention to when you're setting up your irrigation if uh, if you're in an area where you says need this to irrigate is hardy to about 15 plantings. degrees Fahrenheit. I find it to be lower maintenance than European white birch. I don't see a lot of the mess that comes from the seeds and flowers of the European birch. So um, I like that about it. And um, it just has a generally clean appearance. So as deciduous trees go, this has a lot going for it. Nice form, uh, striking feature all year long with the bark and um, not a lot of care needed to keep it happy. Its form, as you see here, by the way, is its natural form. These have not been pruned to achieve this nice conical overall look that you see. So um, that I like too. And that's what I can tell you about Betula jackmontii, white barked Himalayan birch. Enjoy.